I want to talk this morning about turning. And we've been talking about that and Oren made some reference to it. We've been talking about how Jesus's original gospel was about turning. That a word that got translated as repent when the Romans got a hold of it. I was punishing Romans with repent, a word that reminds us of penitentiary and penance and all kinds of other lovely things, um, is, is actually a word that was translated from, an er, from earlier words in Greek, Aramaic, <clears throat> stemming out of a Hebrew uh, word or concept that really means turning, turning and changing. And when we turn, we change. When we turn, it's like there's a tractor beam. Because what we're turning to isn't something inert. It's an attractive power. Love is an attractive power. And when we touch it in ourselves, when we see it in somebody else, we want to draw near to it. We want to feel it. We, we want some of that. We draw close to it. It's a tractor beam. Sometimes it's spoken of as ascending up a hill. A psalm puts it, who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? Who shall be drawn up that hill to the place of the Most High? So when we turn, we do ascend in ourselves. Years ago, there was someone who went around teaching that there are two phases to spirituality. There's an uphill phase and there's a downhill phase. And there's a certain truth to that. I could call it this, the second turning. The first turning is when we turn to love, when we place the attention of our heart and conscious awareness upon the qualities of love. And we're drawn to join with that, to know that, to be it. The second turning is when we realize we can't stay up on top of that hill our whole lives and that there is something to come down through us and into our world. So there's a need to come down from the hill there's a need for a second turning. But do you think that might be filled with problematic issues? Do you think there's that possibility? Because, yes, who the spirit of who we are and our expression of radiance into the world needs to penetrate, well, first of all, our own human soul. Deal with that. We might walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but we're not going to get lost and forget our origin, our place of origin in the place of the Most High. We radiate something. We sound the shofar down into the valley, but never forget who we are at the highest levels of our being. And so the idea of a downhill spirituality well, it, there's a truth to it, but there's potential to get lost in that valley of the shadow of death. And if you find yourself there and find yourself lost in that valley, check it out. Check it out. Did you leave the place of the Most High? I lived with my family for, what was it, something like eight or nine years in New York City. About four of that right smack dab in the middle of Manhattan the valley of the shadow of death in the middle of all those skyscrapers. I tell the story of how for about a year after having moved right into Manhattan and what I figured was the vibrational epicenter of Manhattan. It was right off Union Square. 
And so energetically, there's a lot going down, going on mm-hmm. down south and Greenwich Village and Chinatown and the financial district. And then there was up in Midtown and past that uptown in Harlem. And I figured we were in the vibrational center. And for about a year, I spent a lot of time thinking, how do I get out of here on the weekend? <laughs> or And I also thought, um, exactly how long are we going to live here? <laughs> how soon can we move someplace else? And at some point I remembered all the spiritual teaching that had been given to me. And a little talking to with myself. You ever do that? It went something like this. It's like, Dave, you may be here forever. (laughs) You may be here a lifetime. Get used to it. Be here. Be in it. Be in the valley of the shadow of death. But bring something from the Most High into it. And when I had that vivid awakening, it was like it was like I was a uh, a buoy that had been dragged down and anchored to the bottom of the sea, but then released and just floated up to the surface of the water, and the water was all this mass of human consciousness in New York City. And I found myself bobbing up on the top of it, feeling totally energized by the whole thing. When you have an experience like that, you realize something like this. Um, All places are the same. It could be Sunrise Ranch, it could be New York City, It could be other places I've lived. I've lived in spiritual community most of my life. They're all the same. All places are the same. You're there with the potential of creativity and mastery. You're there with the potential of turning to the most high and joining and loving and celebrating that in yourself. And you're there to bring a radiance down the hill into what may look like the valley of the shadow of death. It's interesting, it doesn't say the valley of death, it says the valley of the shadow of death, what appears to be that, what feels like that. But when we bring light into it, it transforms into something else. So wherever we are, we can turn. And then there can be that second turning, that second turning where we never forget where we come from and who we are. And in everything that we do, every single relationship, every single circumstance, we affirm who we are and who we're coming from, where we're coming from, and what we're bringing there. 